in 2006, I had a great job. I just bought my own house, and I was engaged to be married. And then when the recession hit, I, I got completely blindsided. I got laid off from a job. I was unable to pay the mortgage on the house. And then my fiance left me. All three parts of my life had caved in. I'd just be curled up on the floor in a, in a, in a fetal position. Just I, There was nothing in my life that I could go back to. I would go to this beach. There was this rock just offshore. It was just getting pounded, wave after wave. I would stare at it for hours thinking, that's exactly how I feel. Lost, getting completely beat up, with absolutely no hope of redemption. 2006 was also a rough year for a dog with the name Abby. She was abandoned on a busy highway. This extremely terrified puppy trying to stay alive, dodging trucks and cars and semis. Someone had pulled over and at risk to their own safety, they spent over an hour trying to coax her into the car and drove her to an animal shelter. That experience totally traumatized Abby and she was very skittish and afraid of movement, of sound, of other animals, just about everything. At the same time Abby was going through this, I was at the worst of my worst. Some days I would actually just get in the car and drive. On one of those times, I wound up at a local shelter. I was thinking, you know, maybe if I adopted a dog, it would at least give me some purpose. It was my first time in an animal shelter, and all the dogs were trying to get my attention. But there was this one dog that wasn't, and that was Abby. She was actually just sitting in the corner. She made eye contact with me, and I identified with her when I saw her. I had to bring her home. In retrospect, it was the most extraordinary decision of my life. After the adoption, the staff must have sensed that I had no idea what I was doing. One of the staff members said, just take her wherever you go and let her see the world through your eyes. That advice became the basis for everything that we did after that. So I took Abby to that same beach several times a week. And we were both trying to figure out what's going on in our life. At first, she would just run around and go all over the place. After a while, as we started to trust each other, that distance between us would shrink and she would get closer and, and closer to me. Then eventually, she would come up next to me and we'd just sit on the beach together and both look at this rock out there. I took Abby everywhere with me and spending all this time together, we started to become a team, a partnership. Abby quite literally followed me everywhere. And so when I'd go out swimming in the ocean, she followed me. There was this random surfer out there one day, and I asked him if Abby could rest on his board. As soon as she got up there, she didn't crouch down like most dogs. She actually stood straight up and looked ready to go. So I gently pushed her into a wave, and she just rode it all the way into shore. I couldn't believe it. I just took her out to surf as much as possible. On the board, she was fearless, and she was having a great time. And man, could she surf. So it turns out that there are these dog surfing contests. We decided to enter one. On her very first contest, she got first in her qualifying heats. We just kept entering more and more contests and Abby just kept winning them. She had such a unique style that everybody started to pick up on it and she really became a crowd favorite. Over the course of the next few years, she became the most awarded surf dog ever. And she even holds the Guinness World Record for the longest wave surfed by a dog. 
For Abby, it wasn't about winning or losing or how famous she was or the medals. For her, it was just the pure joy of surfing. I remember thinking, if I could help Abby find something she loved, why couldn't I find something that I just love doing for the sheer joy of it? Whether success or failure, whether win or lose, there had to be something for me. And the more I thought about it, I realized I knew exactly what that was. I've started a company devoted to protecting our coastlines, where we play and work and live. I've discovered what I'm really meant to do. The central thing to that has been this relationship I have with Abby. Surfing is this wonderful sport because you have no control over the waves. You just take what you're dealt with. But what's important is that you try and make it the best ride possible, and no matter what happens, you get up and you get back out there again. So now when I go back to that rock, I no longer see it as this symbol of hopelessness and uncontrollable circumstances. It's a symbol of strength, no matter what happens to you. When I think of that day I first met Abby, we were both kind of lost souls with no purpose or direction. Together, we discovered that we were both capable of a lot more than we ever thought. But I would have never known my full potential if I hadn't helped the shelter dog find hers first. Thank you.